Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Apologies for the terrible overhead lighting. It is pitch black outside because we are now at that time of year. Because we're at that time of year, it is time for me to get my boots out of being stored away either under my bed or in the loft or whatever because they are about to become my new everyday shoes. If you're new to my channel, and hi, my name is Roisin. Um, I'm really glad to have you here. Basically, to bring you up to speed, I have been on some form of a low bike or no bike for the past three years as far as fashion and beauty stuff is concerned. And I feel like a lot of people talk about doing a no buy year and then it's as if it's like totally changed them and they are cured and they no longer feel so beholden to stuff. That didn't happen for me. I did my no buy year in 2020. 2021 I did my year of one so it was like a low buy that was quantity controlled. I found as soon as I did it, again, like any kind of addiction, it just started me wanting to do it more and more again. So I, I really struggled in 2021. Um, and then in 2022, I did another no buy year with an exception for holidays. I allowed myself to shop whilst I was away, but I realized that in doing that, I had actually bought more whilst I was away on the holidays that I was on in 2022 than I had done for the whole year of 2021. So I feel like a lot of people say that they are cured. Um, and that's, that's just not me, I'm still, here, still trying to figure it out. But anyway, the point that I'm getting to is that one of the ways in which I think a lot of people are cured is that they sort of make their peace with living with less. And that's something I feel like I've really weirdly, like I've done it for beauty. I'm starting to get quite good at decluttering beauty stuff, but not so much like clothing and footwear. And I have a lot of footwear that I have been holding on to like and I'm talking about my everyday footwear that's what we're going to look at today is like the everyday practical shoes that I actually wear so we're not going into like my high heels and my special occasion shoes this is like what do I actually wear day in day out and some of it is just so done and I've been holding on to it because for the past three years there's been some kind of restriction to some extent um, or four years including this year really 2020, 2021, 2022 and this year, 2023, yeah, there's been some kind of restriction in place and it's made me kind of desperately hold on to things that I probably shouldn't really be holding on to. They are past their best and I think there is a line that is between getting the most use out of something because like environmentally we all know we need to be giving things a longer life and then we need to be recycling them, like I get that, I'm so with that. If you're on no buy or whatever, there's also that, the idea of of having to just do without it and sometimes that's really quite scary but I feel like whatever I do next year and I don't quite I have I still haven't worked this out but next year I'm, I'm not just gonna go back to I don't think I right now can't see me ever going back to just freely shopping without some kind of structure around it or at least even if that structure is just that I have to write down everything that I buy so that I I'm sort of forced to confront how much I've actually spent in black and white on paper in a different way to just seeing it leave my bank account. Like, I don't know exactly what next year is going to be and I don't know what, as dramatic as it sounds, the rest of my life is going to be. But I think there's a balance to be struck between you want to be a sensible consumer, so you want to buy good quality items that are going to last and you want them to last as long as possible and you don't want to be getting rid of things before you really feel that you've had your money's worth out of them. But also, on the flip side, you want to feel your best. And that's something I've been really thinking about recently, is that I have quite a few things that I'm sort of holding on to. And quite often these are actually things that I wear regularly, like things that I wear, you know, sort of once a week to work, or like my shoes that I'm putting on every other day. And I'm like, I'm not presenting the best version of myself by turning up consistently in these sort of worn out, pieces but I'm also on no buy and although they're worn out or past their best I don't feel that I can say that I need a replacement for them yet because they are still functioning to some degree even if the aesthetic is gone and I do think we need to be pushing past just using things until they don't look perfect anymore like we do need to be giving things longer life but I think there's also a point at which it's like is this detrimental? Like, do I just need to say this has had its life and let it go? That is something I feel like I need to personally get better at and I feel like 
it's okay to get better at that. Do you know what I mean? Like, you are worth, as long as you're not out there buying fast fashion every two minutes, you are worth the clothing that you wear being of decent aesthetic. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense and doesn't sound super shallow. But anyway, so on that note, I feel like I feel ready to start parting with some of these things because what I'm mainly going to look at here is shoes from the last season. So we have had two weather warnings in the last couple of weeks. It has been raining again, it's cold. Summer's gone, it's done. It's done for good now. We had the, the fake bit where it goes done and then comes back, but it's, it's properly done now. So the season has gone for a lot of these shoes anyway. And by the time the season comes back, theoretically, although I will not be shopping without some kind of structure next year, I will be buying things next year. I don't think it's feasible for me to do another year when I'm in a no-buy space, mainly because of what I've been reflecting on about the way that I feel when I'm going out quite a lot now, and I'm just like, mm, I, I don't feel like a good version of myself, and we all deserve to feel like good versions of ourselves. So I feel like I can make my peace now with getting rid of this stuff, because it's not stuff I'm going to need in the next couple of months, in the last few months of 2023, and by the time I need it again in 2024, I will be in a space where there will be a slightly looser leash than there is right now on my spending. So with that sort of strong frame of mind, let's go get rid of some shoes. We are in my downstairs hallway and the majority of my everyday shoes live in this cupboard or some of them in that cupboard. So what I'm going to do I think is just take them all out and see what's what. So I have taken them all out. So up at the back there, there are three pairs of boots. So that's the three pairs of boots I have already started wearing. The ones that I took when I went to Alaska and that I've had on in the last couple of weeks. So all three of those for now, I think are going to stay. These ones on the far right, these are my oldest ones. And I think once I break the ones in the middle in, I probably will get rid of the ones in the right, but the ones in the middle are not broken in yet. So they will replace them, but only once they are comfortable, which they're currently not. And then I have got my Grenson boots, which I'm definitely keeping. Then in the next two rows, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pairs of trainers. Now these are not all obviously trainers that I wear to the same thing but I feel like we definitely during Covid we all got quite comfy. Started wearing a lot of trainers and I feel like I am kind of ready for proper shoes again. That is not to say I'm just going to get rid of all of these trainers or anything like that but I'm definitely ready to, to call time in some of them. I've then got four pairs of ballet flats and then at the front I've got three pairs of sort of brogues and loafers, like smarter flat shoes for work. And then a pair of summer wedges. Yeah, so we're starting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I have twenty pairs of everyday shoes down here. The three boots are definitely staying. So we'll say seventeen pairs that are negotiable. Let's get into it. Coming up to my trainers, I should have probably put my Supergas and my Beiges in a row with these guys because they are more trainers that I wear during the day. These three pairs are gym trainers. This is what I'm talking about. Can you even see that? Like, I have literally worn away the back of that shoe. Like, I don't know if you can see. That is, like, completely done at the back. Um, the other one is the same. I don't think you can really see it because it's black, but... Yeah, I have literally worn it away. And this is the other thing, is that I have very, very narrow heels, but very wide front feet. My feet are a little bit of a strange shape. You can actually see, so my heels tend to walk, my heels tend to go up and down because they're so narrow. So I tend to wear away the backs of shoes, as you can see a bit better in these white ones, although they are less extreme than these. So I actually got these ones, the Puma ones, quite a while ago at the time to replace these black ones. And then I started, because they're like pale pink and obviously they mark so easily, I started trying, I don't know why, because they're gym trainers, but I started trying to keep them good. And I was only wearing them to the gym, I wasn't wearing them if I was going a run outside, so I would keep them for the gym and then kept these for outside. Then my gran bought me these at some point, and as you can see, given they're filthy and worn away at the back, like, 
they get worn everywhere. But even once they came into my life, I still didn't get rid of those black ones. So it's definitely time to say goodbye to the black ones. I feel like the white ones could still have some wear in them, but they are kind of filthy and they are worn at the back. So I think this is, this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about where I have an instinct to keep these because they're not utterly wrecked, but they're definitely on their way there. They're not gonna make me feel like I'm presenting it's not just what I'm presenting to other people or what other people would think about you. It's how you feel about yourself. It's it's it, it's this idea of you're worth more than than those trainers. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, those two, the sketch, the white sketchers, and the black Adidas are going to go. And then I'm going to keep the Pumas. I think they're still okay at the heel just now. You can see them starting to flare, but they're okay. So they're going to stay as my gym trainers. This leads me on to my sort of everyday trainers. I am definitely keeping these black beiges, but they're not going to be an everyday trainer through winter for me. Like I want to keep them looking as nice as possible for as long as possible. Um, so I am definitely keeping them. I'm going to put them away upstairs though. I'm not going to keep them down here for the rest of the season but they're definitely staying. Now, these Supergas, I actually wore them when I went to the garden show with my gran in July, and they got absolutely filthy. And this is them having been through the washing machine a few times. So, I mean, they're still intact. Like, I can't say they're completely done. They're just, I think they get so dirty. They're never going to be white again. But I feel like maybe next summer if I'm shopping a bit more freely I could buy a fresh pair for sort of fashion and things but if I feel like I'm just like nipping to Tesco or something these have still got wear in them so I think I'm going to keep them for now. Now speaking of white and through the washing machine these have also been through the washing machine and I mean they're actually whiter than the Supergas but they've definitely they've still got marks on them and the other thing is that these have basically started coming away here. So I've been holding on to these because I do think they're really pretty, but I mean, ultimately like they're broken. Like that's, yeah. I think it, it's time to, to say goodbye to the Kath Kidston trainers. Next up are my Adidas trainers, which exactly like the other trainers, you can see it a bit better here actually. I have literally worn away the backs of. Again, I feel like if I was going somewhere muddy or something, they would still be all right, but I have been a Superga wearer for quite a long time. And part of the reason for getting these is that they're leather, so they're a little more waterproof, but they are quite worn in at the back. And if I'm honest, they've never been super comfy for me. They just don't, I think, really suit my foot shape. I feel a bit guilty about getting rid of these because I feel like they're kind of too done to be passed on because of the way they are, you know, at the back. But like, they're too good to just like be put out to pasture. But I think I need to be ruthless and see they've had the life they were going to have with me. And yeah, I, I, I think they've still got another life somewhere else. Don't quite know where that is, but it's not with me, so I'm going to get rid of these ones. That brings me on to these two. Now, these are my Kate Spade kids. Obviously, these are not, I was gonna say they're not every day. They are every day when the weather is nice, uh, but they're not something I'm putting on every day when it's raining. So, I'm definitely keeping these. They are starting to fray a little bit at the back, um, but they're still pretty good condition overall. I do have a real soft spot for a Kate Spade glittery trainer, so I think I need to give these a little bit of a clean, but then I'm going to put them away for the season, but I am definitely going to keep them. And then I've got these Skechers, which I actually just very recently inherited. My gran is also a size four and she bought them and they were just a bit too wide for her, so she gave them to me and they are super comfy. So these are... Obviously not the most fashionable of shoes in the world, but they're the Skechers Go Walk, so they're super comfy and they're lace free, so you just slip them, slip them in and out. And to be honest, I could totally see myself getting these 
in like black and white for work next year. They are so comfy. I've also at the moment actually strained the tendons in my feet so anything that sort of pushes on them or causes pressure is really painful. Um, which these don't do because they're basically net. They're also not waterproof so they're not ideal for the season but with how much pain my feet are currently in they're ideal so I'm going to keep these for now. I have started as you can see wearing away at the heel at the back there with my the way that my heel slips up and down and it does wear away at shoes but I feel like they still look pretty decent anyway and they're not the heel isn't irritating me like with the the black ones that I showed you, I feel like I start getting blisters because of the hole in the back of the shoe, whereas these aren't here yet. So although they're not really wet weather appropriate, I am going to keep these and I'm also going to keep these down here for the next little while until my foot kind of heals and then I'll possibly put them away until it's the better weather again in 2024. So the next row of shoes are the Bally Flats. Now I have two here that are cheap as anything from New Look. There is no support, you know, they're just super flimsy ballet flats. And then I have two here that are leather, both from Clark's actually. Right now, I'm definitely, definitely keeping these. I really like these. And I think these are quite useful to have because they're so neutral. But I can't wear either of these because of the way that they sort of curve in and because they're leather, so there's a bit more pressure. Because I've sprained my tendons, I just can't wear these right now. I've been given a sort of 12 week recovery time and then I should be able to pick these back up. I feel like even in winter, it's just good to have like a leather belly flap on hand for just if you need that slightly smarter outfit one day. So I'm going to keep these two for now. I definitely prefer these ones to these ones. And I think these are, I think I might get like one more season out of these and then it might be time to say that these are done. But I think they're okay for now. Then these two are pairs that I absolutely should get rid of. They are cheap, there is no support. But at the same time, because they are cheap and just material and basically don't do anything for your feet, they also don't put any pressure on your feet. So I do have black leather shoes upstairs. But I feel like they'd be the same as these, that I wouldn't be able to put them on my feet at the moment. So I think what I'll do is hold on to the plain black ones, just in case I want to wear something with like black tights and I just want like a, a black ballet flat or whatever. If I'm going to work or I'm going somewhere a bit smarter, when I'm not going to be wearing like a full on high heel, but I don't want to wear, you know, an ankle boot. I want something that's a bit more feminine or whatever. I think it's good to have the plain black ones but I'm going to get rid of the checked ones so they can go. With my smarter shoes, I'm definitely keeping all three of these. I wear these regularly, wear them to work. I definitely get my use out of them. So keeping the three of them. And then the last pair of shoes to consider here, these are a bit like the flats. Again, these are from New Look, funnily enough. And again, they're just, they're comfy, but because they're a wedge, so they've got, I mean, they're not much of a wedge, they're a very low wedge. But it's a little bit of a heel, it's a little bit of a more elegant shoe. But because it's not a very high wedge and because it is a wedge heel as well for what is there, like these are really comfy. You know, I've done like full days in London in these. They do work as a good nude for me. And I also, basically I would like a better quality version of these. But what I really like about these is that they have an ankle strap. Because I feel like, is it the Castanier? is a sort of leading brand for these if you want to sort of invest in a good pair, which I would like to do because these, you know, they are, I think I could get one more season out of them, but they are pretty, you know, they're pretty worn. But yeah, I think I could get one more summon out of these. But it, sorry, I get totally distracted there. But yeah, they're an actual strap rather than a, a tie up. I feel like for the last few years, when I have looked at the sort of better versions of these, they're all ties and because, as well as having oddly shaped feet and skinny ankles, I am also somebody who, I can't actually remember if I overpronate or underpronate, I roll my feet out when I walk, but it means my ankle makes a slightly weird movement. So if I have a shoe that ties, it becomes untied, if it ties around the ankle. It becomes untied as the day goes on, so I like a strap that just stays closed. Yeah, I feel like these could do with an upgrade at some point, but 
until I find that upgrade, I think I want to hang on to these. But they're definitely not a winter shoe, so they can get put away. So this is the new collection. This is where we are with what I've said. I am keeping down for winter, and then I have four pairs of shoes there that I am putting away. So in total, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I've got fifteen that I'm keeping, plus five that I'm getting rid of. I'm going to be honest, that's not as ruthless as I kind of wanted this to be. I do feel like those black ones, once my feet are a bit healed up, they will go. Those middle brown ones, I'm swithering now because I feel like I'd like to see more go. And I think they're in a good enough condition they could go to a charity shop and have some more life with someone else. Yeah, do you know what? Because I, I want to be cutting down here, so I'm going to let these guys go. And if it turns out to be a terrible mistake, at some point next year, I will be able to replace these. So I'm going to let them go for now. So that brings us to six versus 14. Four of which are summer shoes. I'm going to be honest, I'm still swithering on these Supergas, but I feel like it would be really wasteful to get rid of them. No, I'm going to keep them. I'm going to stick by my decision and keep them. But I could get a new pair that I could wear as my fashion pair and these pair can just be my comfort running errands kind of pair until they are properly done. That's that's a responsible thing to do rather than getting rid of them when there is plenty of wear left, they're just a bit stained. Like I have soaked them in bleach and everything like that is, compared to what they were like, they are pristine. But they're obviously, they've just got to a point where they're not going to get any whiter or any cleaner. So I just need to, to kind of accept that. But yeah, those four can go away and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten can stay. So that wasn't quite as ruth. I sort of had visions of me cutting things by like 50% there, um, which obviously hasn't quite happened, but we've cut it down a little bit. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Let me know if you disagree with any of my decisions. Thank you very much for watching this one and I will see you in my next video. Bye.